Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Music of the Week. I believe this is episode 70. God damn, we're getting quite close to the 100 mark. A lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, got another five albums to go through, so let's just go through them, I say. First, we kind of go to Minnesota for the Hold Steady's lead singer Craig Finn and his fifth solo studio album, A Legacy of Rentals. I heard his last studio album, 2019, titled oh, I, uh, I Need a New War. I don't really like that one, really like this one as well. The Holt Steady are a band I got into way too late, and it's something I always say, and I still appreciate their sense of style. Um, Craig Finn is a great singer, I'm giving this album an A-, minus. really love his solo work here. Um, his storytelling is still on point, still being able to weave tales of like the American underground, and sadness and poverty, and adolescence as well. Just something he's always been great at talking about and great at singing as well. He's always conveyed so much into the characters he writes, whether it's with the rest of the whole set or just on his own, as it is here. Really like the production as well. Uh, really lends a lot to Craig's voice, who still sounds phenomenal, um, despite the fact that he turned 50 last year. Still great, still really good shit from him. And yeah, I highly do recommend this one, hence the A- grade that I gave it, so. Yeah, really good stuff, structuring's quite nice. I love how it's put out. Next, we go to Grand Rapids, Michigan for Hollow Front and their third album, The Price of Dreaming. These are a very new band to me. Um, they're a metalcore band, I forgot to mention that Craig Finn's style is more indie alternative rock, so get at that. Got there the way really quick. But yeah, Hollow Front, very good uh, metalcore, post hardcore leaning group. I really liked this for my first album by them and their third. They seem to be really good at their crafts. Just good old. American Metal Call giving this one a B. Really liked how it was, uh, again, much like uh, Legacy of Rentals, really like how this one was put together as well. Really solid emotion behind a lot of the lyrics, really good lyrical themes, really good performances from everyone. And I do like a lead singer whose clean singing isn't just like the typical, well, the stereotypical clean singing. I like it when there's a bit of like roughness or vibrato to it, and there is for this band's lead singer whose name I do not remember off the top of my head. But yeah, still really good stuff from everyone involved. I was scratching my under my thigh there for some reason, I don't know why. Really enjoyed a lot of this structure quite well, put together quite well. Uh, nice little concept to the lyrics as well, if that were intentional, and I do like a good wee story weaving through. So yeah, just really good shit from everyone involved. Just phenomenal, really good. Next we go to good old Los Angeles, California for In Her Own Words with their third album, Distance or Decay. Also my first album by them, which like The Price of Dreaming was my first album by Holofront. A really nice style of like heavier emo-leaning pop punk and one of the most unique pop punk albums I've heard so far this year. I'm giving this one an A. It's the highest grade I'm giving an album in this video. Really loved a lot of this. The lead singer has actually a really good timber to his voice and it's nice to hear someone not just Sam whiny, he can actually fucking belt when he needs to and I'm so glad that he does. He's got a decent scream to him too, that's not really leaned on as much. There's really great guest spots from uh, Derek from State Champs. Jonathan Vigil from The Ghost Inside appears on my favourite song on the album titled Raining in Toronto and he has a great part as well. I really love how they work in the hardcore elements, I really like the band, they just come off as quite charming and very fun to listen to. Really like the lyrics as well, really good focuses on things like relationships relationships and anxiety and some uh, mental things like, well, like anxiety and depression. Yeah, just really up my alley this one. I didn't expect a whole lot of it. It's the only album of these five that I listened back to to make sure I still enjoyed it as much as I did. And yeah, I do really like, again, the pacing's solid. The production is really, really good. Just really good shit from, again, everyone involved. Really liked it. Next we go to Compton, California for Kendrick Lamar Duckworth and his fifth album titles. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Now, this is my first Kendrick Lamar album in full. I've heard a couple of his songs before, never a full album, and this is the first album in five years, so I had plenty of time to catch up with him, and uh, as long as you don't count the Black Panther soundtrack, and I do not count movie soundtracks. However, really like this one, giving it a B plus. Um, I do wish it were more consistent with its tone, but it's still got a pretty decent tone. I like a lot of the guest appearances as well. Uh, the themes are quite good as well. Things like politics, uh, poverty, relationships falling apart, uh, homosexuality, which is very apropos considering that we're in the Pride Month now. You know, it is it is June 2nd as of recording, possibly as of posting this video. But again, really solid handling of the themes. Uh, Kendrick is still quite a good lyricist. He's still got a really good flow and delivery. The production's quite solid as well. I do wish the pacing were better because it's an hour and 13 minutes. It is a very long album. It is a double album then again. But yeah, um, I do like the callbacks to it and I do appreciate it when a long album uses callbacks like this. But for the most part, it 
it did need some fleshing out or maybe a bit of trimming down at times. It's still really fun and I still quite liked a lot of it for my first Kendrick experience. And finally we go to Petaluma, California for One Arm Joey and their debut full length album Happiness To Me. So this is my, again, my first album by them, their first album for me, their first full album as long as you don't count any EPs and such and I don't, as people know I've said it many times. Um, I did like this album. I wanted to like it a lot more because the it, here's two things that don't really help. One, the band is a trio, and two, they sound a bit too much like Green Day. So I'm giving this album a B minus because it is a really good pop punk album. It's still got plenty of bangers on it, but I, the band don't really have much of an identity, and I really wanted them to have an identity. That's pretty much the only major thing going against it, but it does hurt the album more than it should. Um, I like the lyrical themes for the most part, you know, really solid stuff about relationships and happiness being a central theme, as pointed out by the album's title. Um, the performances aren't terrible when the lead singer isn't trying to sound like Billy Joe Armstrong all the time. I like the structuring for the most part, you know, there's pretty good story weaving when there needs to be. Um, the pacing's alright, the production's pretty good for the most part, you know. I do like a lot of the facets of the album, but it needed to be more of its own thing. So I am willing to give them the benefit of the doubt for that, and I don't think it's entirely their fault. I just wish that they will, uh, you know, pull their thumbs out a bit more for the next one. I hope they do. And that'll be it for this one. Next video will probably be another Fight of the Night review on Sunday. I'm not streaming tomorrow night because I've still got a lot of grinding to do to get the weapon. Well, one weapon left now, actually, yeah for our Sunset Overdrive that I want to show off that I haven't been able to get yet. And then when I've got that, next Friday will be continuation of Sunset Overdrive, specifically the Mystery of the Mall Rig DLC. And obviously there'll be stuff in the time between, like PBW or SAVW, and more, um, more of this, and also a vlog announcement. But you'll have to wait for that to come around when it does come around, and yeah, until, that, uh, until then, I will see you all likely on Sunday. As always, thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye-bye.